Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays, a podcast on musical encounters and life. Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays, and we have another special guest, and I love having guests, so I don't have to talk as much. So, do we have Jack, Jack Baxter on today? Jack Baxter, Mike Medlock, yeah. How yes. many people know me by? More people yes. call me Jack nowadays, but yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So today I, we're today I, we're going to talk about something that Jack and or Mike knows very well: professional wrestling and music. And it's something that Mike and I were texting about when we started talking about talking about music and wrestling, and it, it's amazing like I said to Mike earlier, how much research I've done that the WWE is its own music factory, practically. So talk about how did this occur? Like, how did this go down with wrestling and music, that intersection? Well, yeah, it was funny. Like, earlier this week, you you, you asked me to come on and what, what rock and roll guys I met. I was like, I can't think of any, but I've met a lot of wrestlers. But I was thinking uh, maybe we could segue talking about that about rock and roll and wrestling the combination but that's a show in itself yeah like who cares who i met like it's this it really is quite an interesting story how it all started like you had um obviously january 23rd 1984 huge day in wrestling it was hulk hogan hulkamania beats the chic so wrestling's huge uh, a few years earlier 81 summer of 81 mtv launches you, you you put those two things together and it's uh money so everybody knows girls just want to have fun it was um Lou Albano in the video, this and that. So Vince McMahon, the brilliant man that he is, people hate him, but he's brilliant. He decided to have Captain Lou come on to Piper's Pit with Cindy Lauper. Mm -hmm. And Lou Albano caught her abroad. And she, you know, she got pissed off, hit him. And that set up the whole, you know, um, the whole rock and wrestling connection right there because MTV is like, hey, we can play this match. And Cindy Lauper's like, I'll manage a girl, you manage a girl. And we'll show it on MTV. It was the it was the first live wrestling on cable in history, and uh, that was July of 1984. So, like I said, Hulkamania was a few months earlier before that, but so it was rolling. But this got it rolling even more for people that weren't into wrestling at the time. Yeah, they were in the rock. There's the combination right there. You're putting you're putting it together, and it's funny because she picked Wendy Richter, uh, Lou Albano picked the fabulous Mula. And that was the main event. Like there was 11 matches that night. 10 of them are dark. Like they have dark matches all the time when house shows, like like the three crappy matches, they don't usually show them on TV. There were yeah. 11 matches. 10 of them were dark. They only the, showed this match. That's the, it. The, you knew it was a crappy match when the guy only wore like blue tights. <laughs> like he had, he had no costume, no right. outfit, and he... He was just a body ready to get beat. And you hoped when he had that one minute of like, he's doing something good, but it never happened. He would not. Always... No. Some of them didn't even have that spark. But I, I always I always knew when me and my mom left the spectrum, if one of those guys were walking to the car next to us, they, he was he was going to lose. You know what I mean? He was, he was, he I'm, was... Sure. I'm kidding. I walked out. Side, using my mom, we, we went every month to Spectrum Wrestling. We would have front row seats, first or second row. Second row, if it was a bad month, I guess. But yeah. it was so easy back then. We would go in, we would go right to the box office. We'd be like, can we have these tickets? And they would give us the same tickets over and over again. We weren't spending, we weren't rich, but it was probably right. 20, 20, 20 something dollars a ticket, I would think. I'll have to ask my mom, yeah. but that, that's what the going rate was. And then you would see it on Prism the next day, and it was right. awesome. And for, were, all, for all you listeners in France and Guatemala, which we're, you have we're huge in France and Guatemala, the Spectrum is in South Philadelphia, and Prism was a one of the first regional cable channels that showed local sports, right? They showed the yeah. Phillies, the Flyers, but they showed professional wrestling all the right. time. Well, every single month they would show right. us, and it would be cool just to see yourself on TV. It was pretty neat. But we would get there early. We'd see the wrestlers go in. And then when we left, we would see the wrestlers go out. But one time, Iron Mike Sharp, I don't know if you remember him, um, he, he lost a lot. He was a great wrestler, like, in the seven. But once he, he became a jobber, and we just watched him walk right out to the car next to us. And I remember being a kid just feeling bad for the guy. I'm like, man, that poor guy yeah. just wrestled his ass off in there. And now he's, he's, he's parked down the street with, with me and my mom getting heckled yeah. And and this was also we were of the age at the spectrum 
because I used to go, my dad used to take me, where you could smoke anywhere. I mean, you could smoke in the concourse, you could smoke in the bathrooms, and the crowd, the crowds were insane. Like, it was there, were, there were yeah. times I thought the wrestlers were going to be fighting the people in the crowd. That like, was my dad. I have a video of that. I think I showed it to you. My dad got in a fight with the Macho Man. He came up, Macho Man was my, my favorite. He came up, started yelling at me and these other two little blonde kids. And my dad said, why don't you pick on someone your own size? And, and Macho Man's like, yeah, yeah. And, he, and Macho Man starts backing off, playing the heel or whatever. To my dad, I'm like, dad, could you really beat his ass? And my dad goes, Mike, that guy would have ripped my arms off and beat the living shit out of me with them. And I was like, oh, appreciate yeah. your honesty. Yeah. It's yeah. funny you talked about smoking because the one match, they, they banned smoking. My dad, my... Me and my mom went every month. My dad would go like every four or five months because he, he would start shit a lot. Like, with, and my mom, you know, it was funny to me. And my mom was like, you know, but uh, they, they banned smoking. And that killed my dad because my dad would smoke, I don't know, like five Paul Malls an hour. And they had a, a match with Brutus Beefcake and Barry Windham. Um, I'm sorry, Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine versus Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda. And Rotunda and Windham were the champions at that point. And Titles never changed the spectrum. I, I started realizing that as a young child. They just didn't. Madison Square Garden is where most of it happened. So I wasn't ready for a title change. Johnny V takes out his, his cigar, puts it out in Wyndham's eyeball, and, and they tag him, and, and they win. And they win a belt. I'm like, holy shit. My dad's like, I told you it's fake. I'm like, what do you mean it's what, what, what? And we all knew. But like, what do you, what, what's your problem now? And he goes, if I'm not allowed to smoke in the spectrum, neither is that bleach blonde dandy over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, the one of the most famous songs in wrestling was Hawk Hogan's theme song, right? I, I, I remember kids that did that for a talent show and they killed it. They were awesome. I am a real American. That was up. Rick Derringer, right? Rick Derringer, yeah. It was a, so, that, that, that team I just told you about, Barry Wynn and Mike Rotundo, that was their theme song. They were supposed to have that. They took it and gave it to Hogan, and it, and it blew up. And then in fifth grade, me, you, and a group of other delinquents all did it for the talent show. Right. Was- uh, probably people all through the country, right? There are people that I see comments. They're like, uh, Hulk Hogan was the closest to a superhero when I was a kid, Good right? Time. Like, oh, like yeah. and... And it's interesting, you're right, without the musical element, like even the in-match experiences, right? Like right. the wrestlers coming out, right? Now baseball players have their own theme oh, song, music, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it all started with wrestling and boxing, right? Like where they're coming out to the arena with music. Yeah, well, remember Hogan, used to, he came out to Eye of the Tiger, first of all. Junkyard Dog came out, you know, before, before Grab Them Cakes um that he, he sung um he came out another one bites of dust they used real music but you know vince for all it's worth kind of cheap when it came to stuff you, you got to pay rights to that stuff so they started making their own music and making money off the music he, he's yeah he's a he's a genius well but, they um, they they had like we were talking about uh, the amount of albums they produced i mean they they created their own record label i mean yeah. wwe yeah. music is like there, there's like 35 albums. There you go. There. I forgot I didn't put this up for the people yet. But um, here's the first two. And, and they are some beauties. Uh, and like I said, this was different back then. The wrestlers actually sang the songs, a lot of them. Um, like you had Coco Beware singing Pile Driver, uh, Jive Soul Bros by Slick. There were some, you know, catchy little tunes, but, you know, they were, they were corny, but it worked. It was pretty cool. But um, I, I, I didn't mean to got the topic but yeah it was all about um mtv back in the day and that's what blew it all up like hands down they showed this one and the 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 kicker of it is is it was women's wrestling number one which was not huge at the time wendy richter was up and coming but fabulous mula was 61 years old she was well i'm not not even exaggerating that because i i actually looked this part up before i came on i was like i'm pretty sure she was 60. i'm like she's 60 because her the big claim was she had the belt for 28 years who the hell holds a belt for 28 years? Number one. Because <laughs> she hasn't wrestled in 28 years. <laughs> exactly it. Like, it's like when WrestleMania 3, when they said Andre and Hogan meeting for the first time, they met at Shea Stadium years before that. Wrestling does that. But 28 years, she would lose the belt and get it back to But she really did have it since the 50s. But that means she's, I'm doing it in my head. That means she's 60-something years old. So we're, we're tuning in to MTV to watch a 61-year-old woman battle Wendy Richter because Cindy Lauper's there. 
that's the only reason why. And her manager boyfriend at the time, David Wolf, he was like, he's kind of brains the operation. He was a, a wrestling guy. Yeah. And he, he got it all together. And then, so Lou Albano's on one side, Wendy Richter wins, yay. So then a few months later, uh, Lauper and Albano, they make up, they go into the ring, she presents an award for him because they did a lot of fundraising together. And Piper comes in, he's pissed off. He wants credit because he had them on Piper's back. He whacks Albano, you gotta watch the video. If you, if you haven't seen the video of this, it's hilarious. He whacks Albano over the head with the award. He gives the boot to Lauper. He body slams David Wolf and Hogan comes in. And that sets up um, the war to sell the score, the next one. So it turns out the brawl to end it all didn't end it all. It, it, it's, you know, in theory, I guess they thought it was, but they had it all planned because then the next one was Hogan, um, Hogan versus Piper. And that's when Mr. T got involved. That's when Cindy Lauper got involved in that. That's when Orton and Orndorff. And what did that set up? The biggest thing that ever happened to wrestling, um, March 31st, 1985, it was WrestleMania. WrestleMania, it, yeah. This, yeah. All, this all happened over that year and it all built up awesome storytelling. And then you get the WrestleMania and um, Wendy Richter, who, by the way, she lost the belt at the second MTV thing. They didn't even show it. I guess they didn't care at that point. They only played the Hogan match. But then she won it back from Lilani Kai at WrestleMania. So that's the, anybody who cares what happened to Wendy Richter, that's, oh, and then, then she lost it again to Mula. Mula, the old lady, won it back again. But how, did, don't you think it was interesting that Cindy Lauper, because she was real, she was pretty popular at the time, that yeah. someone had to approach her and say, do you want to get in, involved in, wrestling right and think about all the fan base that she grew because everyone does know her yeah. as involved with wrestling you like, either know music or you know wrestling or you know both and and it brought it all together for her and like i said her boyfriend manager at the time he was a huge wrestling guy i think he was pushing her towards it a little bit and she worked with captain lou on girls just want to have fun and then in she bop wendy richter was in that video so and then the goonies the goonies video had all the wrestlers in it piper all of them good enough right so she um it was it was it was a pretty exciting time it was i it was, I, I i i actually have met cindy lopper and you told me that with the phone yeah I, that, I i was in brooklyn at a bar many many years ago, I was going on a blind date and I sat at the bar. I first sat at the bar and then I got moved to a table and literally next to me was Cindy Lauper. Mm. And then to the right of me was a group of girls, like maybe four girls in their thirties. Were they, they having were, fun? And they, yeah, they were having a lot of fun. They were all whispering. They were, they, they were all whispering. They were like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And Cindy Lauper over top of me to them, like it was small table. She's like, yeah, it's me. <laughs> and, she, and I was like, I was like, they were talking about you. And she was like, yeah, I get it a lot. And she was totally cool. She had the pink hair. Yeah. And I was like, I was just like, nice to meet you. And I was literally sitting right next to her. Wait, and, what year was this? I don't know. It's probably like 10 years ago. Like, oh, it was, oh, fairly recent then. Yeah, oh. yeah. Like, and um, yeah, it was like, Cindy, that's Cindy Lauper, and she was in Brooklyn, and I, wow. I was like, "That's cool." But think about those videos. Like you're right about MTV. Like those videos were played constantly. Like yeah. there wasn't like this giant rotation of like four thousand videos on MTV in the '80s, right? Like it was like same band, same videos. Yeah. So yeah. you would see, you'd see these wrestlers over and over. And like before Hogan. It was, it was not a popular sport. It was, it was in bingo halls. It was in VFWs. Um, don't get me wrong. San Martino was selling out Madison Square Garden, but there was still a set audience for it. When this happened, it really did. It blew up. You had the LGN rubber toys. You had the, remember the cartoon? That came out after WrestleMania, I believe. It was the Rock and Roll Wrestling Connection. You had a cartoon. Yeah. Uh, it, it just blew up. And like you said, when you see these videos over and over again, it, it starts to, you know, well, the, the, the Land of a Thousand Dances, that video is insane. I mean, it's still insane to watch because it's awesome. so awesome. It's so strange, yeah. That's what you, we almost did that video. It was either that or I'm a Real American. And I don't, I, I don't, I don't, maybe we didn't have enough people for Land of a Thousand Dances. I don't know, but. Well, it's that, also that. weird to ask your parents, like, can we dress up like these professional wrestlers? Like, they were probably like, who what is going on right because oh, that was a regular day in my house <laughs> the, I, I dressed up like macho man a lot when people weren't around yeah yeah well i think and i think like no, no offense to the, the 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 
the PC people, but in the 80s, you know, professional wrestling, there was no PC, right? It was literally the Russians are bad and the Americans are good. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make them fight and we're gonna shove it in your face. Oh, they were, they, they used um race, racist angles too, but they did it in a way where the audience was rooting for the black guy, as you should. And people don't understand that. They're like, oh, that's so racist what he said. Yeah, and everybody wants that guy to die tonight. Like, right. you know, what I mean? so it, 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 it played its part in just bringing people together in a, in a way where you don't have to be, you know, culturally sensitive to everything. You can show right and wrong in a story. Like Always Sunny, for instance, does it all the time. They do it all the time. Well, so politically incorrect, but they're doing it in a way where you know who the bad guy is. Right. They're calling you know? it out. Right. Yeah. And um, what else used to do too. so, I mean, what do you think? I, 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 I keep coming back to like the, the, the walkout songs, right? Like I remember yeah. it's like literally you would hear the music, right? Like yeah. for the matches, you would hear the music before they started coming out and the crowd would be going crazy. All you had to hear was I the Tiger, I'm a real American, Iron Man for the Road Warriors coming out in Japan. You would have thought um, Japan was like the second coming. It was, it was crazy. It was absolutely nuts. All you had to hear do was hear the music. That's yeah. all it was. You would have gotten a kick out of the late 90s though with WCW. They they stole music. Like they flat out came to Teen Spirit, um, Even Flow. Jericho came out to Even Flow, but it was a note or two off. Right. So they but you you would hear it, you'd be like, wait, let's freaking come as you are. And right. they were right. off, so they didn't get sued. But um, I think I heard back in the day Dave Grohl wasn't happy about it, but I, I don't think they could do anything about it because they outslicked them with taking a note away or something. But it was such, it was such a ripoff. Whereas WWE actually did create their own songs completely. Right. And and I think I read um, in my diligent research that there was like a guy that was almost like the musical um, producer, if you will, oh, Jim, Jim, Jimmy Jim, Hart. John, Jim Johnston. Pro, I, I would think, well, Jimmy Hart sang and produced a lot of songs. He did like the Honky Tonk Man and he sang that. Um, Rick Derringer was the producer. Um, I'm sure there is a, there might be an R guy behind the scenes that, that did all that. Too. Yeah, they, they actually, it, this guy, Jim, it's crazy. Jim Johnston um, oh. was a composer and he was like the head of programming that created all. Just for music. Right? The music and that right. like the output and the content. It's like, it's just crazy to think about, right? Like that it was like at a certain point, like you were talking about with the toys, the um, the big branding, like that it got very strategic around the music. Like oh, yeah. content for video games, websites, like the entrance, you know, the, the entrance themes for the wrestlers. Like it was part of the show. It's part of the, what they do when they, when they wrestle. So. And, and to this day, it's still huge. The entrance themes, like it's weird though nowadays like guys are on a, like their seventh or eighth entrance theme they keep changing them into because it makes more money i guess you get more people buying the listening to the songs but uh yeah it's still huge i mean when you hear the music but pe people don't understand it's different like back then when you heard the i always compare it to like you're a huge flyers fan when you go there you go to flyers playoff if you're in overtime and it's tied how crazy are those fans they're right. rad Right. That's what it's like in the spectrum in the 80s. Now it's like going to a rock show where you, you, you love them, you go crazy over them, but you don't see old ladies like in the 80s throwing shit at Piper and screaming, right. I hate you. Right, you know, right. Like yeah. like it's different. So when people compare Hogan coming out to Steve Austin, both huge, but Steve, but if you weren't around during Hogan, you don't understand. There's a, there's a big difference between a pop from emotion, wanting to see somebody get their arms ripped off, and one because you're like, yay, good move. It's right. just different. Yes. There the, was the, the, suspension of disbelief back then. The, 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 the amount of, like, you, I think the, the whole thing about it, the 80s wrestling was good, va good, good against evil, right? Like, mm -hmm. I remember being a kid being like, that person is bad, and I want him to lose right like Roddy Piper like there nobody was like he's a good person we we want to support him right right because you had that good against evil right. um and I just want to bring up because I remember it I remember on the video Hogan was playing a mean solo guitar I think yeah well he, before <laughs> wrestling he was he was a guitarist a bass guitarist in the band that's how he was discovered and he was a tall just a lanky dude you know 
before he started, you know, eating his, his vitamins or, you know, or whatever vitamins he was taking. And then he became a huge wrestler. And, and that was, that was it. Like, but yeah, he was, he was an actual guitar player at one point. Which, Where, you know, that's crazy. Where, yeah. what is music like in today's wrestling? What's, what's kind of the thing? Is it it's just rock? It's, well, you got, you know, you got, you got, you got some guys with the hip hop, you got some guys with the rock. It, it, it's a little bit of everything. Um, and some of the songs are like really like cool. Like even like Jericho's old one, break the walls down, uh, triple H time to play the game. They're, they're like really like cool songs, you know, done by legit. And, and Jericho's in a band to tie rock and roll together. He's in Fozzy and it's one of, I'm not into that type of metal. But from what I understand, they're very successful. They, they they tour. They they make a lot of money. So for a professional wrestler to transfer, just like The Rock transferring to uh, the movies, that's not an easy thing to do. These guys are like they're they're kind of jokes in other communities, like outside their own. But for the The Rock transcend it and play. I mean, Rowdy Roddy Piper did They Live. I like it, but you know, yeah, I wouldn't say he's a movie star. Right. But like that's like Jericho. He transferred over to rock and roll. It's what he always wanted to do. And you got there's a lot in common. A, a, a front guy and a wrestler are showy. They're very showy people. They're obnoxious. They're arrogant. And it just, it, it, it plays on both arenas. Well, and also I would assume bands, I mean, WWE and, 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 and the brand of wrestling is so massive audience that now it's kind of going the other way where, band, want where bands want to be yeah. a part of someone's entrance song, right? Because yeah. it, like- At WrestleMania, they'll have the band there live. For the intro or they'll have flow rider the one year i don't i'm not a big flow rider fan but i watch wrestling so i know who he is he did he he did an he did an intro um they they have real live bands at wrestlemania now and that, that's the thing that struck me as funny though like they did all this rock and roll stuff and then wrestlemania one they brought in liberace i'm like what does it make sense <laughs> liberace that is insane <laughs> Yeah, like, and then WrestleMania two, they had Ozzy come out with the British Bulldog. WrestleMania three, they had Alice Cooper come out with Jake the Snake. Like we're getting there. But WrestleMania one, you have the world by the balls with rock and roll, and you bring out Liberace. Like I just, they oh, they, they were like, we're gonna get the craziest musician we can for for WrestleMania. Yeah, um, just, yeah, it didn't make any sense even as a kid. I was like, what? Yeah. Um, well, this has been awesome. We're going to do probably a round two with uh, Jack Baxter slash Mike Madlock. I mean, yeah, you, you definitely made, this is a longer discussion around wrestling and music. Um, but well, uh, I, I feel this, horrible because if somebody talks to me about wrestling, usually they leave the room about 20 minutes in. So thank you for sticking around because I never shut the hell up about wrestling. No, I, I actually think it's an interesting topic because it's not something people, I think people take it for granted, right? Yeah. Like, like even music and sport, I mean, wrestling and, and WWE is very much like entertainment, obviously, but sports, right. right? Without music, it's a whole different experience. I mean, without yeah. that. All that stuff, it does. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's a difference back in the day. And I love thank, talking, yeah, the history thank, of it. Thank you for being on Rock and Roll Fridays. Hey, I, it's an honor. I was so happy when you asked me. I was like, I listen to this and I'm being asked to do something. I was like. All right. Awesome. Plus, we don't get to go out anymore because everything going on. So this was nice to hang out for a little bit. Awesome. Thanks so much. My pleasure. And I hope everybody enjoys.